Welcome to Old Guy Tech, the OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 Hi, I'm Rob Channing with Old Guy Tech TV, and I'm here today with Jeff O'Donnell and Eric Stevens, and we're going to talk about insurance. And it's、uh, it seems to be something that's on everybody's mind nowadays. I know it's on mine.、Uh, I know everybody has some kind of issue. With insurance that we have to deal with, and、um, and I think that、um, Jeff and Eric were going to have some solutions that they're going to be able to help us with. So, so Jeff, why don't you tell me what it is that you that you know that you that you want to talk about? What what's the message out there about insurance now? Well, I think the biggest message is that you need to have it.、Uh, so many people say they don't have a lot of money today and a lot of extra money. And it seems like the 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 more or the less you have of money, the more you need to spend it properly and make sure that you're、uh, going in the right direction with it, and use people that can、um, advise you and let you know how to compare and、uh, shopping different plans, finding what's appropriate for you. Definitely. Okay.、Yeah. What we try to do is try to help people buy, as opposed to trying to sell them something. There you go. There you go. So your goal really is to help help people get into the right program or or whatever it may、right. be with your insurance、mm-hmm. and making sure that it fits properly. Correct. And everybody's different. So when you、right. have, you know, some people have a lot of money, and so they might be wanting to do higher, even higher deductibles. A lot of people are, you know, because you have to pay a certain amount. Before your coverage kicks in, in a lot of cases, right. And so, with the basic health insurance, is what we do.、Um, you have deductibles, coinsurance.、Uh, you know, there's out-of-pocket expenses, right. And that's one of the things nice working with Eric, and he can do supplemental policies that can pick up and take care of a lot of those deductibles and coinsurance and different things that you still need to carry on. Right. Right. So, Eric. Tell me a little bit about what it is that, that the supplemental insurance does. A supplemental insurance is an insurance that you take out on top of your major medical. Major medical is normally provided through the employer, and there is a slight cost that sometimes we give them to the employee and split with the employer.、Uh, supplemental insurance is a way that the employer can offer benefits to their employees at little to no cost to the employer to make up the difference. So it's, in effect, it's quite a bit cheaper. Often, the premiums for supplemental insurance is much lower. Than what you're going to have to pay for copayments and deductibles,、mm. and yet they'll cover above and beyond whatever those copayments and deductibles are. Give me an example.、Uh, the average copayment for,、uh, let's say, you get in an accident,、mm-hmm. something happens,、uh, you, you step off the porch wrong, you twist your ankle, you go to the hospital, you go to the emergency room, and you're going to have to pay generally a hundred dollars. Um, when you go to the emergency room, even if you have major medical in place, you're going to have a hundred dollars out of pocket that you're going to have to pay just、right. to go into the emergency room.、Right. Uh, supplemental insurance policies often pay one hundred and twenty dollars just to go into the emergency room within three days of the accident、mm. to get looked at. So you're you're actually in effect making twenty dollars to go in and, and get looked at.、Um, if it's major injury, you're going to end up in the hospital. Now those hospital stays, even with your your major medical, can cost upwards of a couple thousand dollars.、Uh, different supplemental plans. Pay different amounts if you're in an accident and you're you're held in the hospital、uh, per day that you're in the hospital. If you're in the ICU, it pays obviously more. And basically, what that is is because supplemental insurance. They know you're not going to be able to go to the hospital and get out of the hospital and go right back to work. So the way supplemental insurance is, it pays the employee or the individual instead of paying the major medical bills. So it provides them with income in their pocket, so they continue to pay their their mortgages, their car payments. So when they get out of the hospital, they still have a place to live and a, something to drive. How does the、um, how's the premium on supplemental work? So you know, let's say that I, I take supplemental for. Whatever it may be, going to the emergency room or something. What, what kind of? I'm a almost a 60 year old guy.、Um, I've got coverage through Blue Shield.、Um, how would the supplemental insurance help me? Okay, if you're going as an individual,、um, the rates are going to be a little bit higher.、Um, Most supplemental companies will offer a group discount if you go through an employer, which is why we normally target would talk to the employers so they can offer it to the, all their employees at a group rate. Right.、Um, and What makes a group? A group is、uh, three or more individuals. Three or more. Three、okay. or more individuals.、Right. Um, so it's, it's, you don't have to have a very large business.、Mm-hmm. 
to be able to offer it at a group rate. And those group rates generally between 6 to $10 a week. Mm-hmm. So it's not very expensive per week to offer this, right. and it really makes up a difference. If you go in it as an individual, if you, if you are uh, you own your own business, um, and you, you go in as an individual, then it's going to be a little bit more expensive, and those are normally 7 to maybe 12 to $15 a week. Yeah, you know, it seems like, and Jeff, I don't know if you can address this, but it seems like an individual. For instance, my wife and myself, we're individuals. We have to carry our own insurance. You know, it sure seems like we're pen- penalized by being an individual. Our premiums are so high, it just drives me crazy. And, uh, you know, I don't have an alternative at the moment. So what, where do you see that going? Because the, the other problem that I know uh, with medical is pre-existing conditions. I'm stuck with where I'm at. We both have pre-existing conditions. Is, is there a solution to that? Is there something coming down the pipeline on the, in the government way? I mean, I, I believe there was something about Obamacare, but who knows where that's going to end up at. Right. But, but what would a guy like me go? What would, what would my op- options be? Um, a lot of times... A lot of people fall into this situation, and it seems like health carriers tend to, you know, underwrite very strictly, and they are in it to make a profit. Right. And so it is a situation where the the health costs keep going up, so the insurance continues to go up. Um, and we see it every day, and a lot of times we recommend that people stay where they are and go to higher deductibles. Right. And that's one of the biggest things that... Uh, that we look at because simply switching to another company isn't an option because the company already knows what the history is. Right. right. Um, and it's really unfortunate because a lot of times you'll get in a situation where companies have plans and they they start new plans. And the people that can go to a new plan go ahead and go to the new plan because it might have a lower premium, people right. that can get underwritten. Right. And what it does is it leaves the plan, for instance, that you might be in, uh, with people that just can't get out of it, and so that's what escalates the premiums just exponentially. Yeah, I know that uh, you get into a group plan, and you can change within that group, but you can't go outside any further, And, and it, depending. I know with, with our coverage, that's the way it works, and so we have done what you've suggested, is we've gone to as high a deductible as we can afford or comfortable, and one of the issues that we dealt with was uh, a medication. We had a cap on our copay on our on our medication, and I, I mean we had to do something because our medication bills, some of those medications were two and three hundred dollars a month. I sure. mean it was it was terrible. It right. was terrible. So we found a way to kind of jiggle that, but the, the, there really isn't the isn't the room to move around on it like I would like. So, so really I'm stuck is what you're saying. Well, there are, on the medication, there are some uh, discount plans available, and definitely you want to shop. And that's one thing that I've found personally is, you know, the different uh, pharmacists, their different stores and what have you, it's just incredible the amount of difference that there is. Mm. And I could mention a couple of different places, but uh, like I say, you just want to shop um, and really take advantage because the drugs are going to be the same. Right. It's just the profit that they're going to make on it is is right. way different. And yeah, I found that. I found that happen. I found that between CVS and, and uh, Walgreens. I couldn't believe the difference. Right. And uh, anyway, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, Walmart, Costco. Yep. Yeah. And then some people can take advantage if they're in Kaiser. Of course, they can take advantage of that. And that's right. usually a, a pretty inexpensive way to go that way. Sure, sure. Um, well, let's say a person does take Kaiser, Eric. How does that fit into in supplemental? Well, even if they take a, a plan, uh, most supplemental insurance doesn't cover you for prescriptions. Mm-hmm. However, if your employer has a cafeteria plan set up, a mm-hmm. Section 125 plan, um, they can set up a medical reimbursement account for pre-taxing a certain amount of money. If you know you're going to have prescriptions, talk to your employer about setting up a cafeteria plan, a medical reimbursement account, and then you can take the money that you're going to have to spend on your prescriptions right. and throw it in one of those accounts. Unfortunately, as an individual, it's not going to be an option. Yeah. But if you work for a company and you know you're going to have prescriptions, it's actually going to save the employer money because they're going to pay less in the uh, payroll taxes. It's going to save the employee money because now they're they're taking out pre-tax, so they're not going to have as large a taxable income, and that money's still sitting there in an account for them to use right. for right. the prescriptions. Right. Right. So if, if that were the case, that's the way I would t- say go about it. Unfortunately, like I said, as an individual, it's not going to be a benefit. Yeah, yeah, it's too bad. Go ahead, One thing I have uh, on that, there is companies that it's 
I know at, certain companies have a uh, three-person minimum to be a group. Right. There are companies actually that have one person that can be a group. If you have a business, you have to make a certain amount of money from your business. It can't just be a hobby. It has to be your primary business. And sometimes you can do, uh, some companies will do two people. Mm -hmm. So like a husband and wife, if they're both on the business license, you can actually do a two-person group mm -hmm. and be able to get into a group. And what, uh, what happens, okay, let's say this like with old guy tech here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, we're new, we're growing, we're starting to get things going. We have, uh, uh, we've got, uh, between my wife, myself, Jonathan, my daughter, we've got four people in this group working. Uh, Jonathan and I are the full-time people, sure. and uh, my wife and our daughter are the part-time people. Right. Is that a possibility for a group? Absolutely. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Even, even with the company I work for, if, if you have employees, whether they're part-time or they're full-time, to offer supplemental insurance, it's up to the employer to decide who is uh, eligible for those benefits. Mm -hmm. So the employer can say, yes, we're going to offer it to our part-time people, uh, or they can say no. So some benefits they can offer to part-time. It doesn't matter how part-time they are. Right. Basically, the employer is saying, yes, they are an employee. They're showing proof that they are an employee, and then they can be rolled into that group as well. What about, let's say, uh, you know, somehow the, I had a business, and I was in a group plan with, you know, a number of employees, and I went bankrupt. I went out of business. What happens to myself and those employees? Where do they go? Then you go into a uh, COBRA plan, right. which is available for the first 18 months. And hopefully, you know, within that 18-month period, you'll be able to, you know, get another job that has benefits or be able to qualify yourself. So let's say I have a pre-existing uh, condition. My COBRA has run out. What? Am I in trouble? <laughs> you know, because I, I think I am. I mean, th th right. that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing horror stories like this. So sure. I'm getting this feeling that I would be hung out to dry. If you're an individual, it can be very difficult. Uh, and I understand that there's a program through the state of California, and I don't really know any details about it. Mm -hmm. And it was something I was going to try to uh, look up before I came in here, and I just I wasn't uh, able okay. to do that. Okay, well, we'll have the other opportunities. Yeah. We'd love to have you guys back because insurance is an ever- moving changing you know thing i can't you can't you can't get a hold have it hold still long enough to try to see what's going on and uh so we'd love to have you back so as far as that part goes you know maybe there's some questions we'll bring up today that we'll you know we'll talk about it uh, at the next time we get together and, and uh, I, you know i don't want to take up the time i know you wanted to talk about certain things i have all these questions and i could keep going but why don't, why don't you guys tell us uh you know with the little time we have left why don't you give us what it is that you really, what's the message that you want to get out? We, we can start with you, Jeff. Uh, again, it's just a matter of consulting and, and comparing. Uh, sometimes you think that a company won't uh, insure you, and sometimes you can find a company that will do an exclusion, for instance. In other words, if you have a situation where you have a bad back or what have you, uh, they may exclude the back and still go ahead and give you coverage so that you've got coverage for everything. Um, my only, my only thought is, is if you can get full, full coverage and all your benefits, you want to try to do that simply because if you have a bad back, chances are you're going to, you're going to need to spend money that way. Right. Uh, but if you can't get anything else, obviously like your car, there's a lot of other things that can go wrong. Even right. if you replace the engine, you know, there's a lot of things that have to be done. So you just, we really want to make sure that you look at the biggie. And I would say that, like you had mentioned, you felt don't feel comfortable with maybe a higher deductible if uh, you're up to a $2,500 deductible and you start thinking about it and thinking, boy, that's really high. And a lot of people will say, boy, I don't think I can do that. But if you go even to a higher deductible, a lot of times maybe the uh, hospital, doctors, what have you, can work with you on payments and things like that. I mean, that's real life. That's what people really do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just end up having to do that. Right. I think one of the great things about health insurance, even if you have the high deductible, what you'll find is you will pay, um, prior to satisfying your deductible, the, the uh, bill still goes into the insurance company. And what they do is they look at it and they apply whatever discounts because they contract with all these different hospitals. So they apply the discounts, and a lot of times you can save enough just in the discounts uh, to pay for your premiums. Mm -hmm. 
So it's it's a pretty good deal that way. Even if the company doesn't pay anything out, you might save enough just in the discounts that they would get. In other words, if you have, you get a bill, I've seen bills, a $30,000 bill cut down to $6,000 for the insurance company. Wow. And because they contract with the uh, with each of the carriers and each of the hospitals. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Well, what about you, Eric? What's, what do you, what's your message to that? Well, I'm a, my, the message I'm trying to say is, is look into your supplemental insurance. If, if you decide to go with a lower premium, higher deductible amount, take a look at your the amount that your deductibles are going to be. Um, take a look at the premiums for the supplemental insurance. And if the premiums for the supplemental insurance is, is lower than your deductibles, which I haven't seen it yet where it has been a reverse roll, um, then you want to go with the supplemental insurance. Because often in order to incur those deductibles and have to pay those deductibles, you're going to have an injury or you're going to have a sickness or something that's going to put you in the hospital to incur those charges. Mm-hmm. The supplemental insurance, oftentimes, if you go in there for an accident, is going to cover those deductibles. So look at your supplemental insurance, look at what it covers, and take a look at the entire policy. Find out what's covered, what's not covered. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of supplemental policies, they'll cover you for an accident or for a sickness. So if you're somebody who's accident prone, you definitely want an accidental policy along with that. So you can definitely pay for those. Right. And then just take a look at the premiums and see what it covers. A lot yeah. of times the the deductibles or the premiums for the supplemental insurance for a accident or a hospital policies together, they're still cheaper than what you're going to pay in your deductible. So that'll cover you on a full basis of sickness and injury, and it'll... So you can actually, by having to pay even the premium for the supplemental, in the long term, you actually can save money. You can definitely save money. That's the message that you're getting. Let me ask you guys, you know, I'm getting up to that stage. My wife and I, we're we're looking at long-term health care. What's going to happen, you know, we hit our 70s and our our 80s. Do you you gentlemen have a solution for that? what, what, What would that be? Well, that's that's what a lot of a lot of times if we get someone that's you know past 60 or what have you is we we try to find something to get them to the bridge of 65 because hmm. once you turn 65 then Medicare is going to take over right and we have Medicare supplements so basically Medicare in a nutshell Medicare pays about 80 percent of the bills and the supplements are designed to pay the other 20 percent okay. There's some alternatives, and there's some different things as far as drugs. And I think one of the things that you touched on was the amount of drugs that you can pay nowadays is literally astronomical. Oh, yeah. Um, Absolutely. I've seen, I've seen drugs that are literally $1,000 a month uh, for people to take, and, and actually even more. But uh, And in some of those cases, and it's something you want to check with, the... Um, uh, manufacturer of the drug actually will supplement the payment of those drugs. Got some discount programs. I've, uh, I've had some of those with mine, a couple of mine. Yeah, but they don't go very long. They're, yeah. they're short-term discounts. Is what yeah, they are. and it yeah. just depends because a lot of times they, you know, they have their research and development, and of course that's why the drugs are so expensive. Right. But once they have them on the market, it literally costs some pennies to make the uh, the drug and they're still having to pay back for the um, R&D into it yeah, yeah, yeah. what they've done yeah. so mm-hmm. so they can help out and it's still better for them to get you know $100 for for a pill instead of 1000 as opposed to not selling it at, at all. all so right <laughs> right absolutely well and and so um, again is it, is there another message or are you pretty good with what you said and and, and why don't you tell tell the people how they can get a hold of you i know you're an owner agent um, and how can our audience get a hold of you? Just look on the TV there and just tell them, do you have a website, do you have a phone number, what do you got that they can get you to? to yes, you? we have uh, O'Donnell INS, uh, O'Donnell, <laughs> O'DonnellINS.com, and uh, our phone number is 530-622-0536. We also have a uh, Sacramento phone number for people that have a 916 number. And that's 916-933-4610. And your primary coverage is? Uh, we do all types. All, all kinds of insurance. Health insurance, home, auto, business, workers' comp, bonds, 
virtually so, virtually everything. You cover the whole gambit. Yes, except one stop shop. We don't do we do supplements with Eric. <laughs> okay, well that's right. And then, and then Eric, you're with a different company. I'm with a different company. Yeah. And so, how can uh, people get a hold of you? Uh, they can call me at five three zero three nine one two four one five, and uh, I will meet with them in their homes or at their place of business. And we can sit down and figure out what it is they need. Sit down and, and figure out if if they need it. Yep. And if they need it, what what is the best coverage? Now I do want to touch. You you did ask about people that are approaching sixty five. Right. Um, with supplemental insurance, the state of California has it limited to uh, under the age of sixty five. So in order to sign up for benefits, supplemental benefits, they have to be under the age of 65. Right. Now, when they turn 65, those benefits don't stop. Several companies will continue those benefits at that price for the rest of their life. Mm-hmm. So once you sign up with the supplemental insurance, you never have an increase. Okay. So that's good. Um, even when they hit 65, they roll over to Medicare, uh, Medicaid. Right. It, it doesn't it's change anything. It's, it, it's, their supplemental insurance is still right. in there, right. and it's still effective as long as they pay their premiums. Is long-term care supplement considered supplemental? I mean, where, where does that come into? Yeah, yeah, so I mean, in other words, if I, get, I, I end up in a convalescent hospital somewhere and I want that, that extra care I'm going to need, what, what would I look to get? Well, long-term care policy is is an additional, completely separate policy altogether. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, it's like most other insurances: the cheaper you start it, the the less expensive it is. The older okay. you are, the more you know, expensive it gets. Right, so, right. let's say now, as I'm getting close to sixty, let's say I want to start it now. Uh, probably a good idea. Yes, it would be. Okay. If you think you're going to be getting it at all, the sooner that you do it. And it's just simply they need enough money to te- to collect because they're going sure. to pay out on it. Sure. I mean, that's, you know, the percentages say that they're going to pay out on it. Right. Mm-hmm. And the percentages say you're going to use it. Right, right. So right. as we really get important. older and we live longer, uh, yeah, right. I, I can see that. Best time home. for them to collect premiums. Sure, <laughs> sure. Well, then maybe that's something I better get on soon here, huh? Better figure it out. <laughs> yeah. We have people that specialize in that also. Yeah, because, you know, I, and, and I don't mean to take up your time, but I, I do worry about something as we get older. What You know, what's going to happen? You know, we, we own a lot of things, and we want to make sure that we can pass them down to our kids, and I don't want to spend every dime that, that, you know, we've had here paying for my medical. Sure. You know, definitely. So I want to make sure that I have the right coverages, but yet I have to make sure I can afford them, and that and that's the big deal. And that is the key. And a lot, of, I get that a lot is, well, I can't afford to do that. Well, if you can't afford to pay for the insurance, you can't afford that. You really can't afford not to have it, mm-hmm. because if something were to happen and you were not able to work, but you had medical bills piling up, you still had to pay your regular bills. Right. You really can't afford not to have insurance in place. Right. If you're struggling right now, just imagine if something were to happen, yeah. whether a sickness or an injury, be devastating. You, you gotta have something yeah. in place, or you're gonna lose everything. Yeah, I think that's a great message. So I, I think you guys really got that message out, and and I'm hoping those uh, of you out there that are are listening and visiting with us and uh, listening to this message. Take it to heart. Uh, both uh, Jeff and Eric are available. Uh, we'll put links on our website to them so that you can get right to them and get some of your questions answered. And, guys, I'd like to have you come back, and, and maybe we'll focus on uh, certain specific areas a little bit more and get a little more detail. But I want to thank you very much for coming because insurance is a question that everybody's interested in. Mm-hmm. I don't care who you are. And uh, it, this has been fantastic having you come here and join us. And uh, we'll, well, we'll get you back. If any of your viewers have any specifics in, in any type of um, home, auto, Jeff does it all. Does it all. So if they have any questions they'd like to hear about something specific, I mean, they feel free to contact you, and, and we'll prepare that, and we'll, we'll have some answers That'd if they have great. any specific questions. Well, we'll do that. We'll do that for our audience. Hey, listen, for you guys out there, I want to thank you for joining Old Guy Tech TV. My name is Rob Charney. We'll see you soon. Hi, this is Rob Charney with Old Guy Tech TV, and I want to talk to you today about Windfall. Windfall has two outstanding offers for you to take advantage of. They have their 12-week business-only ad for just $60. That's just $5 a week. You're not going to find a better deal anywhere. Windfall has a rewards program like no other, a real windfall. Give us five and your ad is free. So refer five people or businesses and you get your ad for free. Visit Windfall on the web at www.shopthewindfall.com or call 530-621-1698. Everybody needs a Windfall. Thank you, Windfall. See you soon.